Hi, my name is Janessa. I'm a physical therapist assistant here at Align Therapy, and today I'm answering one of the questions that I get very frequently from my patients, and that question is, how do I know when I'm training enough? How do I know if I'm doing too much? How do I know if I'm doing too little? How can I manage how much exercise I'm, I'm doing in order to get the results that I want? So that's the general question that I get asked very frequently from my patients. So I want to go kind of to the beginning of this and outline like, you know, what are my patients' goals? Are they trying to build muscle? Are they trying to work on endurance? Are they trying to improve their stability? Those things matter a lot when it comes to determining how much of an exercise to do, how often to do it, and how much resistance you need in order to reach those goals. A lot of the time when I'm prescribing exercises to my patients, I usually am working with them on building up some strength. So what I'm going for is a little bit of an overload principle in exercise training. So I am giving them a little bit extra resistance with their exercises, stuff that's going to kind of push the muscle, make it tired, make it work a little harder, that kind of thing. I usually look for a moderate intensity for the exercises. So I will ask my patients, you know, is this exercise easy, moderate, or hard? If they say that it's easy, then I'm not building them up enough. I'm not giving them enough of an overload in order to build up their muscles. So I'm usually aiming for a moderate intensity. If I have my patient answer that the exercise feels hard, I need to make sure that they're doing it with correct form. I need to make sure that they are not compensating in any kind of way in order to perform the exercise because if they're compensating, then they're not training correctly. Right? So I always, I usually aim for that moderate intensity. Uh, it varies a little bit patient to patient, but that's kind of my benchmark that I shoot for so that I know, you know, that we are overloading, but we're not overstressing, right? And we're not compensating. The next thing that I look for is, you know, are we trying for like a power move or are we trying for endurance? Right, and that kind of helps me determine how many repetitions and how many sets I want the patient to do. So when we're training for endurance, I am usually having them do kind of lower intensity but longer repetitions. So we're doing maybe calf raises, for example, and they want to have just really great endurance. Maybe this person is a runner, right? I'm going to have them do more reps with a lower intensity. I'm not gonna make them hold 50 pounds and do their calf raises. If they were going for more power and explosive strength, maybe they're a high jumper, then I would have them lift a heavier weight and do fewer reps. What we're going for here is different based on what your goals are. So it really depends on what you're aiming for, what you're lacking, and how we're going to approach that. If you kind of boil it back down to what is your goal? If your goal is mostly for strength, power, that kind of thing, you're going to do higher intensity, lower reps. If you're aiming for more stability, endurance, that kind of a thing, we're going lower intensity, higher reps. That's kind of how I judge it out and determine where I want my patient to be. Another thing that I get asked about frequently is training until failure. I'll have patients that have been gym goers for a while and they want to know, you know, do I need to train until I can't do the exercise anymore? Do I need to be doing so much resistance that uh, I hit my last rep and then I cannot possibly do another one? And doing some research into this, in the last 10 years, there hasn't been any solid evidence that training to failure is more effective than training until fatigue, really. If you're training to failure, it's not necessarily going to hurt you. You want to make sure that you're still keeping good form. But that just means that uh, you can't do another rep. Your muscles are so worn out, you've used all of the energy that they have to give in that moment that by the end of your set, you cannot do another rep. That's 
what training to failure is. So as long as you're keeping good form, as not long as you're not losing, you know, your positioning as you're doing it, you're still using the same muscles, training to failure isn't going to hurt you, but it also isn't necessarily going to be more beneficial than training till fatigue. The main reason that uh, people will train until failure is in order to gain more muscle mass. They want like a hypertrophy, so more muscle fiber, thicker muscle fibers. They're looking for a bulk. Recent studies don't really show that that's been very effective uh, compared to other training methods. Anyway, I hope that helped to clarify some things on when to know how much to train, how heavy to go, those kinds of things. I hope you have a great day.